Okay. All right, everyone. So we're going to get started here. I got I wrote down some announcements so I wouldn't forget. Uh, first announcement, winter design competition. Um, we said this last time, but we are making it official. I'll send it out an email at some point. The, so for the winter design competition, instead of just being used basic electronics from the kit, it is now also, it must, uh, we want to, the thing that'll, it should be most useful in a zombie apocalypse. So, is that like an extra judging criteria? Yeah. Basically, we're just adding that as a criteria. I mean, definitely, if if you make something, bring it, even if it doesn't work. Most of the judging is, oh, this is, a, like, you made a thing, you went through the effort, it does this, and it's supposed to do this. Hopefully, those match up somewhat. If it doesn't work, you know, explain why. You know, it's, it's still pretty, it's still pretty design-based. Door prize is a 15 inch OLED television. And no, it's not. <laughs> it, 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 it could be, but no, not yet. Okay. Oh, I have to change what screen this goes on because you guys can't see it. We want monitor three. There we go. Okay. Uh, more announcements. Uh, Austin is still. He still has his services, which I believe we agree. It was fifteen dollars for a one-sided, about four by five inch circuit board. Four by six. Four by six inch circuit board. Uh, comes with drilled holes and pretty much ready to just be have stuff soldered onto it, right? Okay. And then seven dollars an hour for milling thin parts at about a ten by ten inch board. Yeah, that's that's the maximum size. Okay, maximum size ten by ten inch. Um, there's probably somewhat of a restriction on materials, I'm guessing. They, the, yeah, wood, woods and plastics, uh, people have to provide or pay for the materials. Right. So you, you pay materials and about 7 bucks an hour, which probably be one or two hours, depending on how much stuff you have. Right. All right, so the CAFI makes a Cali fundraiser. You will need, it does say you need one of those coupons in order for that to count, which I haven't really seen that before, but whatever. Um. I'll, I'll send out another email as well with a PDF of that so you can print out more. Just hand them out. Give them to everybody you know. Um, we are still selling kits if you don't have one. Uh, I brought those. And tomorrow night is the community and help night at 7, same time, BC Infill instead. So it's not here. It's in the other engineering building, BC Infill. That's just kind of meant to be. Everyone, it's it's a community forum. Everyone helps each other out with their projects, with ideas. Uh, kind of get everyone's brains flowing. If you maybe they'll they'll help you out with something. Oh, I never thought of that before. Wouldn't it be cool if stuff like that? I'll be there. So I've been doing this for ten years. Or so I can definitely get that. Yeah, I have a feeling Austin will have to make a line or something. <laughs> Okay, um, and that's everything I wrote down. <laughs> so hopefully that's everything there is. Let's get started. Oh, I said that. I really didn't want to forget that. All right, so we're going to go over today analog interface with the Arduino. So kind of the main difference of uh, analog and digital, you can basically take in a range of voltages, and that way you're not stuck with just is it on or is it off you can say oh if, if we have a sensor is it you know halfway do you do we have half this whatever we're sensing or stuff like that so with the Arduino how that senses that it has a 10-bit analog to digital converter uh, basically means it can read a voltage between 0 and 5 volts and then you get a number between 0 and Two or 1,023. So if you say you, you pull again about two and a half volts, it'll read 512. It's just kind of a, uh, a scale on that. So first thing we're going to do some hardware. We're going to go with the light meter, which is a, it's a photoresistor. So basically, what this resistor does is depending on how much light it senses, it changes the resistance of it. So it acts like a normal resistor, except the resistance value changes depending on how much light. Um, oh my goodness, do I have one of those? Well, I guess I can. I totally forgot to put one in my kit. 
I'm not going to hit start. I'm still going to hit. So. Get that layer. So yeah, the range for the the photo resistor you guys have it's it go, it goes from about 15 ohms to one mega ohm. So it's pretty pretty big range. And the project we're gonna do will change which we'll have, we're gonna have three lights. And we're gonna change which one goes on depending on how bright the light is. So um, first thing we need to teach you to use that is a voltage divider. It's a very common circuit used. Um, Whenever, whenever we're we're using a photoresistor, so what the voltage divider does is, is basically you can you have your two resistors and you know you have a known voltage at the top, and since you have both resistor values and the current through them has to be the same, that means the thing that changes is the voltage across across them. So the voltage in the middle, we can end up finding that out with our handy dandy equation there. So since our resistor value changes, basically when you have them set up like this, when the when the, the photo resistor value res resistor value changes, that voltage changes. And we can read that voltage with the analog to digital converter and and do stuff with it. So I'll show you how to do that here. So yeah, this project will include the three LEDs just like last time with the 330 ohm resistors and we'll set up a photo cell in a voltage divider with a 10 kilo ohm resistor, I believe. So anyways, here's the circuit. So we'll hook this up with our breadboard. Okay. So I'll go ahead and hook up with the guys. So we have our... Oh, so right. So we have all right up over here. So the colors for so for the lights, we have 330 ohms, just like last time. That's orange, orange, brown, gold. So orange. Orange, orange, brown. Wait, so you know, if you've ever had one, you should oh. find yourself a multi gear. You can buy them as cheap as 10 bucks for kind of junky ones, but they work to up to like $400. Um, in my opinion, it's worth getting an extra one if you can afford it. Uh, to the last one. They do. There's a great one on Amazon for like $18. That's the highest rated one on Amazon. I think it's a Sentech. So yeah, so these three are the 330 ohms, and then this is a 10 kilo ohm. So that one is a brown, black, orange. The other thing I said is you make your codes, you can measure your resistance. So one color blind. I can't read that. Didn't know that. Makes it fun when you're wiring giant things. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> Alright. So we're going to take the final my component here. We've got a little bit of separate efforts. We're going to need to teach a point to them. Alright. There's a 10K. And. Oh yeah, we have more wires if you guys need more wires. Of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is there no pizza? Oh, yeah. Do you remember the 
So yeah, the photo resistor is a really weird looking one. I saw the picture. It's basically a little red flat thing on two wires with squigglies on the on the top. Okay. All right. If anyone wants me to come look around or needs. Good, good. Uh, we're just going to start this question. Pizza, we order it. Yeah. 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 So, for those LEDs, are they connected on opposite sides of the breadboard, like with the with the little middle thing that I mean. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's a set this one up really weird. So it looks like we have the so the, the the cathodes are here. So this is the shorter end connected to ground. I don't know why you didn't just put this there, but so yeah. The, the cathodes, the shorter end are connected to the ground. The longer ends are connected to the resistors, which are connected to the data. Yep. It might be easier to look here, too. Yeah. It's really good to lay. So we have Jeff and Sullivan? It's Justin's left somewhere. Oh, Justin's brand. He's a cool guy. It's usually the pencil box that messes up. Oh, let me unplug your deal. No, no, dude. Do you know how hard it is to do It's true. <laughs> not hard. Unless you're doing right. that, unless you're doing things that have large capacities, there's not really much you can do. Okay. Right now, I have to jump and put on it so that's all the lights are <laughs> doing that. Okay. <coughs> Let. All right. Does anyone need need help setting it up? One more time. One more time. Okay. So I guess I, I might as well ramble on about kind of what happens with this voltage divider. So we have the five volts at the top here. Uh, connected to the photoresistor, and then you have the 10K right below it connected to the ground. So right in the middle of them is where we're going to sense, uh, plugged into the analog zero pin. So basically when this resistance gets really big, like say 1 mega ohm, then it's significantly larger than this 10K. So that basically drops this voltage down to zero because since this resistance is really big, we have a big, uh, higher voltage. Am I saying this right? Am I saying this bad? So this is a higher resistance, so there's a, a bigger voltage drop. Or right. is that? Um, if so, if you may allow me for a second. So the way I like to think about voltage dividers is let's say you have a big rectangle like this, and you go, you know, five volts, and this is our ground or you know our zero volts right so let's say we have um, we have a total resistance so if you were to add these together these two resistances together is there a way you can do this on like eight? I'm not sure if I can say you can do that like if you want to go to the same 
Oh, that's true. Yes. Um, well, do I could draw it on wait, there? Can you wait. project your uh, webcam? Yeah. <laughs> Let's. Are we nude on paper? Can we that's see not, that? That's not yeah, showing up very well. Yeah, do it on paper. Uh, but then we... Oh, actually, then you can... Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, then I can move that over. Yeah, I got paper over here, actually. Great. All right. Project the SOV. All right. So we'll go ahead and just move this to the projector only. Cool beans. Uh, so if anyone else your screen now. needs the circuit. That, right there, right there, right there. Okay. okay. So let's say we have this box right here. And at one side, let's say this is going to be our zero volts. And up here, we're going to have our, our high voltage. So I know it's upside down for you guys, but you should be able to under, understand that upside down. I put that on the side. <laughs> and uh, so let's say that we have our resistor circuit like this. This is our voltage divider, and up here is going to be our 5 volts, and down here is going to be our 0 volts, right? So let's say this is uh, 2 kilo ohms, and let's say this is 3 kilo ohms, right? So if you were to add these together, these equal to 5 kilo ohms, right? Oops, that's okay. 5 kilo ohms, right? So what you can do is you can kind of think about these as like a, uh, a fraction. And so if you put... You know, if you remove this as a fraction, you know, your, your line would be right here, and so this chunk right here would be 2 kilo ohms, and this chunk down here would be your 3 kilo ohms. And then you can look at this, and you can say, well, it is 3 fifths of our 5 volts there. So if we multiply that, what we're going to get right there and right here is going to be 3 volts. Does that make sense? Does that kind of make sense? So you can think about it in terms of ratios. So, so there will be, so be like a 3 voltage drop across the first resistor? <laughs> there would be a 2, two volt drop. Because okay. 5 minus right. 3 is 2 volts. So you can plug that in an equation and stuff too, but I like, I like the picture of the, of the sliding scale because you know, if you were to move you know, this to 1K, then... Um, instead of having five kilovolts, you're gonna have you know four kilovolts. I'm not gonna try to draw four upside down, and then you'd have one over four times five, which is whatever the hell. One twenty one point two five. Yeah, one point two five. So you can kind of, or I guess you'd flop it around, so it'd be three point seven five. But you guys, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. An easier way to remember it. Anyways, I divulge. Inception going on there. But yeah, so, and then basically when you when one gets bigger, then the voltage across the other gets way smaller. So the one we read can go from basically zero up to basically five and anywhere in between, depending on the resistance or the, the light that goes on the resistor, changes the resistance, all that. All right. So, who needs more time putting stuff together? What some of the LED should be on each half? Oh, right. Um, so, the flat end should be with these black wires on ground. So, that should be also the shorter, pro shorter prong. Is the shorter prong always ground? Yeah. Well, yes, because. Not, not ground, but the lower voltage, I'd say. Yeah. So uh, basically, this is kind of the same setup with the really weird look as we had with the resistors and LEDs last time, where we have our data pins at the top of the resistors. I, I would look over here. This is a little bit easier to see it. You have your pins to the resistors to um, the longer end. This is the longer prong or anode of the diodes, and all the shorter ends are connected together to ground. Let me draw a ball picture. Oh, you got it? Yeah, Austin's, Austin's got my back here. Uh, let me put that. 
here. Yeah, so so this is the longer prong and this is the shorter. No, this is the long No, no, no. Wait. The uh the long end always goes towards your positive voltage. So the Let's... fat end of your of your symbol is the long leap. So you hooked it up. Well, that'll still work. Yeah. Asa <laughs> hooked it up, flip flopped with the diode in the same direction, but yeah. <laughs> it's yes, it, it's, it'll, it's, it'll, it's it'll their still. equivalent circuits. Yeah, that'll still work. Okay. So you want us to check, come around. Yeah. That, oh yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, that's what it was. Nope, they are no. connected to the same place. So yeah, you don't have to plug it into that ground or the one next to it or the one on the other side of the board, but as long as it's plugged to one of them. So if you plug it into the wrong one, you're going to engineer and help. <laughs> so be careful which one you pick. And also, if you really wanted to, the way he has it hooked up, so you don't burn all these together, you can stick them all in the same way. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let me see if I do. Uh, I almost wonder if they did it on the number or something, or Have you guys done um, serial debugging yet? Yes. That was workshop one, actually. Okay. So, yeah. Let's kind of draw. So, the way Asa has it set up, is he has the resistor connected to this one. To let's say let's have it on two. Okay, you got can you guys even see that with the screen in the way? We'll draw it up here. Oh I'll draw it here. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so between your data pin and the long end is the resistor, the other end goes to ground. Or if you have it to where the long end is at two and then your resistor goes between here and ground, that works too. The long end should just always point towards the other source. Yes. You don't point with a short, you don't point like this, you point like this. Say so you remember, point towards the power source. Right. Okay. Or maybe random way to remember it. It'll work. 
you know, do so in the power source aligning them. Like the at the D four D two that we operate. Yes, and those are going to the resistors. Sorry, I'm, I'm, ta I'm talking about the, the leads of the resistor itself, not the uh, not, not the, the connection. So they don't need to be touching the power source, but the longer prong goes towards wherever the power source is coming from. Well, yeah, we're, we're talking about the physical LED itself, not the screen. Okay. This is okay. schematic is correct. Oh, yeah. So maybe that was a bad way to remember it. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that right? What? In a breadboard, can two things be in the same slot? Like, oh, you can. If it fits, but, but you'll, you'll, you'll end it's up with bad hard to do. <laughs> I don't recommend it. <laughs> Where does it stop setting up the last? I think this is one of the schematics we made at like two in the morning. Obviously. <laughs> the next one I feel better about. Okay. More time. More time. We're good. We're good. Ready to start coding? Okay, here we go. All right, so let's start coding here. I will move the PowerPoint over here. All right, so first thing we want to do, start with the bare minimum, of course. For example, is basic, bare minimum, and it opens it up over there. Whoop. Okay. So as we're going to start doing, oh my gosh, <laughs> trying to slam it to the side of the screen. I'm going to get way over there. Ah, that's what I want. Okay. So first thing we want to do is define our pins. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Is that, is that good? Cool beans? Uh, so we'll say define sensor a zero. Then we're going to define our lights. Red is four. Yellow is three. Wait, why are those going blue? Eh, oh well. Green is now two. And then we're going to jump straight in to setting up our pins. Pin mode for the sensor is, of course, an input. You don't have to change anything for the analog input. you just still an input. Uh, the only differences between the analog and digital inputs are the analog inputs have to be the A0 through A5 pins. So you can't do you can't read analog voltages on any of the any of the digital pins which are on the other side of the board. So it's just the A0 through A5 that'll work for reading analog. And pin mode red output pin mode green out output pin mode Yellow output. Oh, okay. And then we're going to start the serial monitor for some debugging purposes. Unless he added that. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Everyone this far? Cool. Let me know if I'm rushing. Yeah, sorry. Uh, up here? Oh, right. So that starts our serial, uh, our serial, serial protocol. So that way we can open up that serial monitor on our computer where you can basically send and receive text between, uh, between your computer and the Arduino. So that just starts it with a baud rate of 9,600 bits per second, which is the standard. So, And that's super useful for debugging. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. <laughs> okay. And so next bit of code here. I can't read that. I'll, I'll type it all out here. So the next bit is really the whole rest of it. We're going to read in an analog value. And then basically see if that value is within three different ranges. And depending on which range it's in, turn on a different LED. So first thing we need to do is define a variable for us to look at. So we're going to say value, int value is analog read on the sensor pin. So we're just reading in an analog value, so it'll give us a number from 0 to uh, 1,023. And then for debugging, just to make sure it's doing it correctly, we're going to add a serial that print and print out that value. All right, so now to check the ranges, we're just going to add an if, else if, and else statement. So the first one, where if value is greater than or equal to, so that's uh, greater equals, and it looks like a Pac-Man, zero, and, so that's ampersand, ampersand, value, oh, value is less than 341, which I believe we calculated to be um, a third of that range. And then we put our curly braces to do a bunch of stuff in there. So we're checking if the value is between 0 and the 341. If it is, then we're going to turn on the red light. So we, then for the lights, we just want digital right, red, high, or 1, ASAP 1. And turn all the other lights off. Digital right, green, zero. Digital right, yellow, zero. So there's our first chunk. It's between those values. So that should be when we have a high resistor value for the light sensor which I believe that's when it's dark. I guess we'll see. So then we want to add our else if. Am I going too fast? Good. Okay. Else if uh, value is greater than or equal to 341 now. So now we're going to do the chunk between 341 and 682. Same kind of deal there. I'm just going to copy this code straight over there. Same bit of time. Bonk. Except we want the yellow light to be on. So I'm going to change yellow to one. Then for our final range, we just have an else. 
So that means it's got to be bigger than 682 or equal to. And we're going to put in those three more of those digital rights, except this time we want green to be on. And that, I believe, is all the code. Yeah. I'll go back to there. So that's the whole thing. So we're going to read in that value, and then depending on how much light is on that resistor, it'll change which color light is on. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll upload it to the board. Make sure the right one. All right. Go ahead and upload it. And now, when you cut, when you cover it up, it should change down. Mine's just changing down to yellow. It looks like it's not quite dark enough. Has anyone gotten theirs to go down to red? Yes. Oh, all right. Oh, this must be different. Let me test the resistor. Do you know how the photo resistor works? Like, I know it changes its resistance based on the light. I don't exactly know. Austin probably does. Um, I don't know so from much. I know it's something in the material where basically the more light there is, it allows more electrons to flow. Or maybe it's less, or some amount of electrons will flow differently depending on how much light there is. I forget what the material is, but this is basically how uh, your camera sensors work, except you have, I think, three of them per pixel, and they each have a different color filter over them. So for your color, or maybe it's four. I don't know if my emphasis is four. It might be four, one is for black and white, or basically brightness, and then you have your colors. So then, you know, three of them have the color filters, only green goes through one, so you know how much green there is, and how much red there is through the other one. And it's kind of amazing, there's tons of those inside one little camera. And now, yeah, nowadays everyone's pushing for more megapixels. <laughs> You guys still see this okay? Or? So, we had a question about do you know exactly what material the photoresistor is to make it change with the light? Um, no, but I can tell you how it works. Okay. Well, let's hear Austin's explanation of how the photoresistor works. So I kind of explained basically the, the, the materials with, with how much light there is, it basically allows or disallows more or less electrons to flow, right? Yeah, so what yeah. happens is you have, so like if you look at your thing, you have like a squiggle, right? On the other side, you have another squiggle, right? You look something kind of like that. Well, this is connected to one side. This is connected to another side. And this material in between... In here, it's it's what's known as a semiconductor. So it kind of conducts electricity, it kind of doesn't conduct electricity. And with these, there's a piece of glass on top. And so what happens if you look at it from the top? Um, you know, here's the edge of one side. Here's the edge of the other side. And this kind of sort of conducts electricity, but not very well. That's because it doesn't have a lot of extra free electrons. So if you think about like gold or copper, there's lots of extra electrons to give up, and so electricity flies through really easy, and, and it's great. Well, semiconductor doesn't have as many, and so but what happens is when you have um, light travel down like this, there's a piece of glass on top, and when that light hits that piece of glass, 
it causes an electron to move down into the semiconductor. And that gives it an, an extra electron. And the more light hits it, the more electrons it gets. And the more electrons you have, the better your electricity can flow. Does that make sense? How much light should be required to change it from red to yellow? Um, mine won't go down to red, so basically the room. So and you can also play with your values too. So if you want to make it brighter, or if you want to make it so your green stays on for more, or whatever, you can you can play with it. And I'm gonna call Crazy Carl's because he's being a little too crazy and not delivering pizza. Yeah, so I mean, we're doing 
Well, so that way you use the one part of this one. We find the voltage drop in this case. Minus 2.5, minus 2.5, minus 2.5, minus 2.5. Minus 2.5, 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 minus 2.5
obviously in the game it wasn't just in the hunt, it was too deep. So, if you look at it with the flat side where it says TMP looking at you, the uh, pinouts are the left, the very left pin, that's basically a powered, very right pin is the ground. It's, so that powers it, and then your output is in the middle, as it shows on there. So, in order to properly use this, if you're using it for any other circuit, you can put anywhere between 2.7 to 5.5 volts, it should still work, and it'll output between 0.1 and 2 volts. So when we read it in, we should be getting values between, I don't know, not the full 1,023, but around 400 top. And it can measure temperatures between negative 40 and 150 degrees Celsius. Cool beans. Uh, I got all that stuff from that site there. If you want to look a little bit more into it, it's on this. It'll be on the on our website after this. <coughs> All right. So here's our circuit here. Uh, hopefully this one's a little bit easier to read. So we're gonna hook up the TMP and then the RGB LED. So the way this is in right now, if you see that second, this second, second one here, this is your common capital, which means it's the common. It, all three of these. The shorter, or the, the cathode part of it that goes to the lower voltage, all of them are connected to this. So if you see, we just connect that to ground here. So it basically three LEDs smashed into one. So if you take out your RGB LED, it should be the clear one with four prongs. That longest prong, that's the common cathode here. So you want the longest one to be second, or not connected to the resistors. I'll go ahead and do that. First thing to kind of set up here. Oh, one thing to note, all the, let me, I forgot, the, the, this one we're using different resistor values. Uh, one was the order called in or sent it online? I don't know, I'm, I should check with him. Because they're not, they're not finding it anywhere, and they, uh, basically want to help you unless they get a number that's called in. Okay. Uh, can we contact? Can you do you have anything to send him an email with real fast, Justin? Or okay. So, but if he did send it in, it appears to be a loss. Okay. Well, I guess we might be getting free pizza next time. <laughs> free free pizza. So. Sorry guys. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. So. With these resistor values are 470 ohms, so it's yellow, purple, brown, gold. I have it marked there. Um, well, I guess I have it marked there. I don't need to write it. So there should you should also have three of those. Huh. And you be doing some color mixing. Yeah. Well, not so much. Oh man, there is some later. Oh man. All right. We, this is probably <laughs> going to be the, my, fa my favorite challenge for me. That. Once again, we have more wires if we need them. Stuff like that. Right, so we have our here. Make sure the flat end is facing you in order for this to be correct. And then, like I said, the RGB LED, third, the longest prong is second and not connected to an LED.
So yeah, there are different kinds of the RGB LEDs. You can get common anode one, but this one is common cathode. So you always connect the lower voltage. In this case, it's ground to that common cathode. And so our temperature sensor is also going to A1, just like our, our analog was last time. Okay. So we got A1 to the middle prong. Oh, one thing. Let me pass around the put it. Oh, there it is. The, so these LEDs are not God, coordinated. <laughs> they're, they're not diffused at all, so it'll be somewhat easier to see the individual lights unless you put taper in it. So I'm going to put a pseudo diffuser around ours so that way you can really see the colors mix instead of just kind of be separate. So I'm just going to take a piece of tape here, and go like that. So we'll pass this around. Piece of tape on the ID, and that way the colors are mix and it'll look a lot better. It'll be a lot easier to see, I guess, a color instead of just red and blue and green. Okay, and we have our five volts. Here, and here. All right. Oh, just on top of it. Yeah, I, yeah, I should probably show you guys that. Okay. So, I don't know if you guys can see it here. They just have the tape on it like a flag, basically. It's right on the LED. Take it off and you're done. But that way the light mixes and you see the color and see it. Okay. Um. All right. And then, oh, so for analog out on the Arduino, if you look here on these, see the little squigglies? Those are pins that can have analog output. Uh, what the little squiggly means, so it's not exactly analog output, it's something called a PWM signal. So it's, it's kind of something that mimics an analog output, but it's not actually analog. So, you know, an actual analog output, it would output, say, you know, Three volts just steady. But what PWM does is it basically sends a series of pulses um, in certain widths. So let's say you want an analog out of 50% or you know in this case it's like 2.5 volts. So what this, what this PWM signal does is it sends out a signal that goes like this really fast. So if this is the period of the PWM, 
it basically sends out a pulse that lasts for half of that, half of half of the whole period. And then since it's going so fast, uh, for stuff like lights and, and uh, motors, it mimics being an analog voltage. So it's basically on for half the time, off for the second half, and it it since it's you know barely on and then goes back off, it it the light will be dimmer depending on your analog voltage. So it's not actually analog, but it's close enough. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So that's why if you see here we're skipping pin four because it doesn't have a little squiggly. So let's see, I said red was six. Yes. There it is. Okay. Hi, Justin. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So who could drop the ball in the answer below? Oh, uh, okay. So, I just got really pissed off for these girls. Well, I mean, they did miss us one time before that, so... <laughs> it could have been their fault. <laughs> so, is it on the way now, or... Did you say anything on it? No, we never ordered. Oh, okay. We'll have pizza tomorrow. I promise. If not, heads will roll. Okay, so I think I got mine and all of that. You guys have a couple bucks, I know we're going to do ones. Oh, no. You guys are starving, not to. We personally had to go for the last five days, like, nothing but pizza. <laughs> I think we would go out to finish this. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. That's fine. Alright, so. Thank you. Is anyone else? Is everyone ready? All hooked up? Cool beans? Okay. Thank you for having me call them back and tell them the only guy ordered in Kenny Man. Alright, so let's go ahead and start on the code here. Let me get up my handy dandy multi screen here. Handy dandy notebook. My handy dandy notebook. And I'll just skew this. Okay. So, as always, start with the bare minimum. Oh, this is the bare minimum. Okay. I'll just clip stuff. Okay. So first, what do we do? Define our pins. So for here we have the TMP or the sensor or whatever you want to call it is A0 again. I just got a text. And another one. So then we're sending, we're defining all of our lights here that are part of this RGB LED. So RGB stands for red green and blue so we have each of those on a separate pin we got R is 6, green is 5, and blue is 3 and then oh yeah so um, if you look at your Arduino there's no squiggly next to 4 because it cannot do analog output 
So, yeah, th there were no three together, so I had to skip one. And then we are going to create a Boolean va variable. So what Boolean means, Booleans can have one of two values, which is true or false, zero or one, basically on or off. Think of it like that. So we're creating a Boolean value. So for this project, we're only having two colors that will just transition between. So we're having red and blue. So we really only need to keep track if it's red. Because if it's not red, we know it's going to be blue. OK. So now in our setup, we, of course, need to do our pin modes. So for our inputs, we have the TMP, which is an input. Don't need to do anything special, even though it's analog. As really the only thing, just like I said, just needs to be on one of those six pins. And then we have, oh, that is not a comment. Well, I guess it is. Outputs. 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 There we go. Pin mode, we have a red light is output. Pin mode, green light. Output. If you're not already tired of typing pin mode and output, Really wanted to do you could define uh, PM as pin mode of parentheses. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's create create an endless cycle of work and things to remember here. And then we're going to set up our variable. We only have one, so is red. We're going to start it out to be false. So. Basically, we're going to, since we don't really have anything hot we can use to do a big range of temperatures, we're going to sense if it's basically floating or if we're covering it with our fingers and it heats it up to our body temperature. So we're going to start it off to be blue, which is cold. And then when we're holding it, it'll be red, which is warm. And then, of course, for debugging, we want to start the serial monitor to make sure things are working because usually they aren't. All right. Can everyone raise their hands when you're ready for me to continue. Uh, <coughs> yeah. I love to say that uh, it's like is red false at the bottom there. You've done it when you defined it. I think so. Let me double check. I know sometimes they don't like you to set things. Let me check. Uh, yeah, looks like it should work fine. Oh, man, defining it to be false up here instead of down here. It's actually really good programming practice um, to do that because uh, some compilers, if you don't tell it what to be, it will just grab something right in that hand. And so you don't have to learn anything. It was just whatever it was there before. Right. So yeah, you can define it either way. Sometimes there, sometimes people define it in the setup, but yeah, the, basically if you forget to define it, then yeah, in whatever variable, whatever data was at that memory location that it assigned that variable to, it uses what's there. Sometimes, depending on what uh, like you know, language and stuff, Java will just throw you an error. But yeah, all right. Okay, so is everyone comfortable with what we have so far? Cool beans. All right. So now we are. I'm going to show you guys how to. Did I skip something? No. No, I didn't. Okay. We are going to define a custom function to set our LED color for us because we have to set it a lot. And this way, all you have to do is call this function, give it some values, and it'll just do it for you. So, below your void loop here, which is currently empty, we want to type void. I called mine set LED color. You can really call it whatever you want as long as it doesn't have a bunch of crazy characters. 
So this is kind of our function name. And when we say void, we're basically saying it doesn't return a value. And by return, like, you can call a function that say, it says add, and then give it two numbers. And then it will return those two numbers added and say an integer. This one just doesn't return anything, so it's a void. So, and we're giving it three values to take in. So we have an integer red, so that's our red value, integer green, uh, if I can spell green, and integer blue. And then, of course, we have our curly braces to say our function is more than one thing. Actually, I don't know if functions cannot have curly braces, but... Okay, they do have to have curly braces. Just keep thinking of things I haven't really tested. But okay, so all this function is going to do, it's going to write whatever we give it for red to our red, and then everything else. So we have our analog write. So just like digital write, it's analog write this time to our red light. And we're going to write our red value. Copy the same thing for the other ones, except we have our green and then our blue. And of course we want to write green to green, not red to green. Green, blue, oh, not our blue, blue. Alright, so this function just kind of takes care of that for us. Of course, you can you can always call analog write anywhere else. But this just makes it super convenient. All right. What? Uh, 10k is blah. I believe. Gosh, dang it! I don't have these memorized. Let me. 10k is. Hold on. Oh, are you are you doing the first project? Or? Okay. 10k is whoops. 10k is brown, black, orange. Okay. Okay. So does everyone have the function? Cool. All right. So now go back up to that setup, and I put it in front of the serial that begin. You don't really have to. That's where I'm going to put it. So now we're going to use that function to set our LED to be blue at first, because that's what we want it to start at. So we call our function set LED color, and then we have to give it the values that it wants, which are three integers. We have a red, which is zero, green, which is zero, and then the highest value you can write for analog is 255. So it's an it's an 8-bit analog out. 8-bit uh, means you know you got basically a byte. Which is which can have 255 possible values, zero to 255. Sorry, 256 possible values because it includes zero. So 255 is the highest you can write to an analog output. Basically, it's just five volts, highest it'll go. So we are setting red to zero, green to zero, and blue to 255. So it will glow blue. Okay, then next thing we want to do in our loop, we are going to read in the analog temperature. Yeah. Oh, just, um, would this be a good place if you're doing this code and you know, you're written for us and you're working in a parallel slide? Would this be a good place to put a compile and just see if, if it's an option that we're trying to do by you know, trying to set it? Yeah, you could. Yeah, actually, yeah. If you want to, you can check it right now. Um, after, it'll basically turn the light to blue and then not do anything. But yeah, it should be a perfectly working program right now. So you can verify it, upload it, and then your light will just be blue. We'll go ahead and do that. Why not? Why is that red? <laughs> One. I must have hooked them backwards. Because... Oh, I totally did. I had to do that. 
Austin is also a terrible person. All right, so back to the code. If your light's going red, you just put wires in the wrong place. So first thing we want to do is we want to create a variable temp, which reads in our value from the TMP. So it's an analog 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 read for the TMP. And then this this formula here to convert it to Celsius I got off that web page. So basically the value it gives you it's you know it's zero to 123 and you have to convert that to millivolts and then divide it by just subtract 500 and then divide by 10. So we're going to do some have us do the math for us here. So we're creating another int called degrees uh, degrees Celsius or deg C equals and we want to parentheses, parentheses temp times 4.88, which I did some math there. I really could have had the computer do it, but basically, um, each 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 increment that you can read. So that one. So if you read in a two, a value of two out of 123, then it's basically two times 4.88 millivolts, so it's about nine millivolts is what you're reading. So this kind of gives you that value in millivolts. And then you want to subtract 500. And then after the last parenthesis, divide by 10. So neat thing about you know variables and all that stuff, you can do this math, have it do the math for you, and calculate all this stuff, so you don't have to, you know, if it equals this, do this. If it equals that, do that. You just say, I need this value by calculating it like that. This whole reason computers are invented. Array. And then, of course, we are going to print everything out to the serial monitor to make sure we're getting what we want. So first we're going to print just our raw value we get there. So that should be that number from 0 to 123, or 1023. And then we're going to print, add some text. Yeah. So this will make, basically all four of these print statements will make one line. Since uh, at the end, only the last one is a print ln, print line. So we're just going to say, this is what we read, or value, and then say what it is, and then or, this is the calculated value in degrees Celsius. And notice I add the spaces before raw and after or, because otherwise your data will be right up against that word. So then we want to print our calculated value. And finally, the end of that string. So space degrees Celsius. OK. Let's go ahead and upload this for now. We'll just double check that this is working. Then you want to open up your serial monitor. And it should be just kind of putting in a whole bunch of stuff like that. Nope. Nope. Okay. Just trying to figure out there. That'll work. Okay. So if you see right now, it's mine's reading about 22 degrees Celsius, or the raw number it gets about 148, 147. It's kind of touchy, so you see it's like jumping a little bit between 148 and 147. So if you notice, if I hold my finger over here, that should go up slowly. 
yeah. So then there's climbing. So right there, it just went over, it just got to 26, 27. Proof that I am hot. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you know it would laugh. Then you let go, it'll chill back down. Oh, the shortcut is Control Shift M. You can also go Tools uh, Serial Monitor. Austin's do doing science. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a it's a piezo disc. That one, I forget when we're going over that. That might be workshop five or six. We have it laid out somewhere. Okay. So yeah, so it's working so far. I can leave that open. Doesn't really matter. All right. Is everyone's reading about this value or? Is anyone getting any weird values that are way off, or is it all about what what I'm getting here? Yeah. So just out of curiosity, just not a problem, but so that, that initial that instant, which is the analog read of the sensor. Yeah. So is that just like the voltage, or not the voltage of the thing? It's it's basically a ratio of the voltage. So if it gives you a number like. So yeah, so right now we're getting 149, right? So the maximum value we can get is 123. So basically zero corresponds to zero volts, and this 123 corresponds to five volts. So basically this 149, if you want to get the voltage, then you can just do a ratio, so you got so it should be 149 over 123, all this multiplied by 5. And that'll give you the voltage. So you're basically doing a ratio of the number you're getting over the total number you can get, and then multiplied by that maximum voltage you can get. I from zero. Oh no, you're right. This is a 24 because we also count zero. Sorry. The maximum number you'll read is 123, 1023, but there is 124 values. So actually, no. Well, yeah. Yeah. It'll give you. I mean, it's <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about a one, one, one more in the bottom. So if you want to be super specific, can everyone see that? So, and it's about, I don't know, 500 millivolts ish, roughly. I need, a, I need my calculator. All right, so next thing we need to do, after our print statements, we are going to check if our degrees Celsius gets above 26, and it's not already red. So if it's already red, there's no reason to transition to red because it's already there. So we add if degrees Celsius is greater than or equal to 26 degrees and the light is not already red. Add our curly braces. So here comes the fun part, everyone's favorite part of coding. The for loop, the dreaded for loop. So, for loops, they look really complicated and really weird. It's basically a while loop that allows you to do something right before the loop, and then you tell it what to do at the end of every loop. So, it's kind of just making it, make, giving you a little less things to type out and just compacting it a single thing. So, Let's let's break this down. So we go for, and then this first thing inside the for loop, it's basically what do you want to do before you loop through anything? 
So generally what you use a for loop for, you create a variable that's just kind of temporary, which is usually i. So here we say i equals 0. So you're creating a variable i, starting it at 0, and that's going to happen before it does anything in this loop. Then you put a semicolon, which I don't know, this is the only <coughs> weird thing that separates things with semicolons. Unlike, you know, while loops and whatever. So then you have the condition for staying in the loop. So it's basically like the while loop. While this condition is true, keep looping. So our condition here is that i is less than 256. Because once it gets to 256, that's higher than we can output. We're already at red. Then you put another semicolon. And then this last bit is what do you want to do at the end of every loop? So for us, all we want to do is increment i by 1. So this is a shortcut to say i equals i plus 1. It's i plus plus. So that's the, so this uh, i plus plus is the same thing as i equals i plus 1. Just a super short way of doing it. So that's that's the end of our for loop things here. And now we just have curly braces for our actual loop. Okay, does everyone kind of understand what this for loop is doing? This thing usually gets a lot a lot of first people if you haven't taken a computer science course at all. And so I guess let me know if you have any more questions about it cuz I know the first time I saw it I was like, "A oh, what?" A for loop? What a for loop? What? Anyway, so in our for loop, um, what we're doing is so we're sensing if it gets if the temperature gets high enough if it's not already red. So now we want to transition to red, but we want to do it slowly so you can see it like slowly shift and it looks really cool. Yeah. Why is it less than two fifty six? Oh, so that's basically that would be the same thing as saying less than or equal to. 255. So basically what will happen, yeah, let me, uh, good why, question. Why so 256. So what we're going to do here is we're basically incrementing the output of red one more after each certain period of time, which here is uh, about four milliseconds. So we're basically going to say, okay, output zero, wait a little bit. Okay, now output one, wait a little bit. Output two, Three all the way up to 255, which is the maximum value you can output. So that'll be all the way on, and then so we're basically just cycling through 255 times. So then once I gets to that 256 value, it checks that condition, says, "Oh, 256 is not less than strictly less than 256." Exit the loop, continue. So it's going to be like the brightest red that you possibly get. Is yes. So that's the brightest red, the brightest blue, brightest analog output. Good question, though. So, yeah, it's going to go through from 0 to 255. At the end, i does equal 256, but since we created it here, like we said, it goes out of scope and it's no longer a thing after it exits the loop because it's, it's only a thing inside that for loop. Okay, so in the for loop, we want to set the LED color using our handy dandy function. So we're actually going to uh, change the blue and the red values at the same time. So what we want to do is set our red value to start growing. So that we're just going to set it to I, because I grows throughout this loop. Green, we don't want to mess with. Now, blue, we want it to shrink. The same, at the same speed that I uh, that red does. So we're going to start it off to be its highest value because it's already there. It should be because it's blue. And then we're going to subtract I. So basically, as it goes through this loop, red gets bigger, blue slowly gets smaller because you're subtracting a bigger and bigger number. And then, of course, we want to add a delay so it doesn't just go red because we want it to go red
And then, of course, to do our bookkeeping, we want to make sure that we know it is now read. So outside the for loop, but inside the if statement, we want to set is read to true because after that for loop finishes, it should now be read. That's a lot to go over for seven lines of code. Six lines of code. Well, I guess seven if you include the bracket. Okay. Is everyone good on this? Cool. And now... Wait. Oh! That's the best thing I've ever heard. Anyways, I, d I made a second slide about this to explain things. Okay, so now this is the chunk of code we just wrote. Now we're going to do an else if to, it's basically going to do the exact same thing but opposite. Now we want, if it's less than or equal to 24, we want it to change back to uh, blue. But only if it's currently red. So, now we add an else if degree C. Oh. Yeah. And by the way, temperature based log sensors will not help you during the zombie apocalypse. So, probably not a good thing to use for uh, living <laughs> Temperature based what? Yeah, hey, log sensors are like they're all temperature based. Oh, okay. So then you're making yourself a log tester. If you don't love me enough, then I leave you behind. <laughs> Somewhat useful, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so we're checking if our degrees we read in is uh, less, than, less than or equal to 24, and that is currently read. The reason we don't use the same number, so if you, before we checked if it went to 26 or above, now we're checking if it went to 24 and above, so there's kind of that gap in between. That way... Since it, if you notice when you when you held it down, it transitioned really slowly. That way, it doesn't jump between the values and it doesn't go red, blue, red, blue, red. It'll just change the red and then it won't change back to blue until it does get significantly cold. So it kind of stops that from happening. So in our else if we're doing the same thing, we're adding our for loop. Same thing, i equals zero, semicolon, i is less than 256, i plus plus, curly braces. Oops. The only difference is we are just changing which color begins to grow and which color begins to fade away. So here we want the red to fade away and we want blue to grow again. So this time we're just basically swapping the red and blue values from last time. So the red is going to be 255 minus I. Green is still zero. We're not messing with green. And now blue is going to grow with I. And of course we want our delay so it looks pretty. And then same with our bookkeeping. Now it is no longer red, so we set that to false outside the for loop inside that else if statement. So this is this is doing the exact same thing, just the other way around. So colors, different colors are growing, different colors are shrinking. Okay. So that should be everything. That's the code. So let's go ahead, upload it here. So now, if you notice, it should start out blue. Just like this. And then you hold your finger over the temperature sensor here. And it'll slowly, it'll fade to red just like that. Let go. It should fade back to blue after a couple seconds. Ooh. You notice it kind of goes to purple in between. 
that's kind of that mix of color you're seeing when red and blue are both halfway up. So then you get red and blue, purple. <coughs> See, is it all working for everyone? Ours continuously lost the time. Really? Oh, yeah. Kind of cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me double check through there. First, oh, go ahead and open up your serum monitor. I want to make sure you're doing the same thing. So you can finish your thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's not the reading. Oh, this should be. Uh, oh, that's fine. You you merge the connections. Oh. Okay. Did you put like a website to show you how to do that? I just get it to be compatible with those kids. Well, too far, I think I probably put for the synthesizer thing. You just need to go now. So I can show you how to do that. All right. Move your mouse. Okay. Let's back over. Say, so upload your code. Should be working. All right. Is anyone having weird issues or? Want me to take a look at something? Looks like everyone's is working pretty good. So that's kind of how to use the temperature sensor and LEDs. So now we have my favorite challenge I've come up with so far. Hold on. <laughs> no. <laughs> so now I want you to make a rainbow with your LED. This is probably the coolest thing you can do <laughs> in my opinion so it doesn't have to go I, I realized when I wrote my challenge code I actually made it go in the opposite order so it goes red orange yellow green blue purple instead of purple through that way so as long as it goes in a rainbow direction I'll be happy one thing uh, hits I used for just kind of reference and how to set colors I use what's called an array which is basically a group of variables so it's um, it, it makes it super handy so you can say here so say my int or, or, in, or it's an integer called my array and you notice it's got those square brackets and then you basically give it three integers so what that's telling it you're saying okay you're making an array you're giving it three different values and those values are one, two, and three. Yes. About at the end, but yeah. Oh, you're alright. You can still, you can you can still stay. You can hang around. Weird. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if you want, I can show you guys how to use a, the arrays. It's it's a little bit more complicated than it. Well, it's no, sorry, it's not as complicated as it looks. That's what I meant to say. Okay. Who here has looked at uh, like tutorials on Arduino.cc? You should make them go to Arduino.cc or show them how to look at Arduino.cc for that stuff. Okay. Not to be mean. So, uh, yeah, we'll then show you how to do that. Oops. 
So if you open up your web browser, and run that over here, we go arduino.cc. I spelled Arduino wrong. No, no, no. No. <laughs> That would have been really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of an Arduino site. If you haven't, I'm surely you've all seen it because you've all downloaded the IDE. But they have a lot of great examples and reference here. So reference here. So like say the playground. Playground, come on. They got all kinds of neat stuff here. You can look at. Best place I like to go is the examples. So you can find all these examples they have here. Like they have data loggers, link things here. Here you go, analog, analog. Here they, they have the fading for the LED. Let me just kind of show you a thing with the um, with the uh, arrays. And of course I do that. So basically how you would start an array, it's just kind of the same as any integer value. So let's say we make an array called, we want to make an array for the color blue. Even though we know really it's just 255 to the blue. So we have our int blue with our box. And to, to make sure you say it's an array, you add those box, box braces, box brackets. It's weird when you talk about them. <laughs> and then you do the same thing where you set it equal to something. And whenever you set it equal, it has to be in the curly braces. Surrounded by the... or with commas in between. So for blue, we know that it has no red, it has no green, but it has 255 blue in it. Like we did in our last project there. So this makes it really convenient for colors with, say, purple. So you can say purple is half and half red and blue, 128, 0, 128. So then if you want to get to these values later, you can, if, if in a function, you can either just send the whole array, or if you want to say, what's the red value of blue? Well, you can get to it like this. So you can say, uh, let's make a new red value of blue. That's equal to blue, the zeroth item in there. So they're indexed 0 through 1 minus how many there is. Or, sorry, how many there is minus 1. So to get the first one, you say blue of 0. Start at 0. To get, say, the third item there, it's blue of blue two. Might help with that. So, sorry, I No, you're good. Uh, if you guys want to do it and then come with it tomorrow, or yeah, actually tomorrow, because we have the help night tomorrow. So that's really the end of what I have for you guys here. Um, I'll put this back up. Um, also, if you want, you can look up. There's actually a lot of examples online where they have color changing things um, that can either cycle through the rainbows up. You can look those up too. I found a lot that make it so you put in a certain pattern and it does things. So you can find a lot of help for this online too. I'll put up my version of the challenge code tonight. Yeah, thanks guys. Um, so yeah, help nights tomorrow, 7 at the BC Infill. It's also engineering one oh, B106. I had one other thought. I totally forgot what it was. What's the boundary for yellow and orange? Oh, yellow and orange. a good question. Let me... So, what I like to do for this stuff is I looked up, for mine, what I did, I looked up um, RGB uh, LED colors. And then I looked at this site here. It gives you the values for a whole bunch of colors. So I looked at this table basically here. Um, so your yellow 
which you can always tweak it, but what these guys say is yellow is, you know, all the way red, all the way green. And their orange down here is all the way red, but only 165 green. But, you know, as long as it looks orange, that's good enough for me. By the way, when you're trying to do some RGB LEDs, there's no possible way to make brown, even though it says there's brown on there. It's just going to look like dark orange. Dark red. Or dark red. So what's the challenge to go from purple to it's just a fade through the rainbow. Oh, yeah. So through the six main colors, I did it red through purple. You can do purple through red, whatever you want. You could do blue through green, but that would look the same as purple through red or whatever. Yeah. Basically, just cycle through. If you need inspiration, just watch me at that. <laughs> All right. If anyone wants help or anything, stick around. Pizza will be had tomorrow. And from now on, I get just a this is going to turn blue faster than the finger touch top of the wall. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and upload mine just so you can see what it looks like. Is this streaming? Yeah. You want. Challenge, okay. Alright, so here's my version of the working code. You can see this in that sheet. So he just kind of slowly goes through the rainbow. It's really cool. <laughs> but yeah, so and then I'll send you guys an email. Um, we were thinking about next week not having a workshop, but we're gonna have another um, info night on the open design competition itself. And it'll spark more interest there because it's definitely not too late to start. Like we haven't even technically signed anyone up yet, so. You guys don't really need to go to that. It'll be the same thing we did in October. Or, when did we do that? No, we did that one September. September. Before September. We did that in September. So, but if you want to come for a refresher, it'll be the exact same rules we went over, except now we have the zombie one in place. You're not doing one next week. You go busy. Well, I think we also want to not make it feel like a class because it's been every week for three weeks. So. Well, because we're going to have three more at least. <laughs> All right, for you guys on Twitch, we'll go ahead and quit streaming here. If you have any questions, uh, send us an email.